Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today for our collections webinar. I'm going to give everyone a few minutes to join and then we'll get started. Thanks. Save the insights. We'll help you to find the next unicorn. We'll help you to see where the smart money is investing. CBinsights.com. We'll help you to discover the next hot industry. CB Insights. Hey everybody, this is Anand from CB Insights. Uh, thank you so much for making the time. Uh, today, uh, what we're going to talk about is a new capability we've just launched called Collections. So I tend to get excited about all of the new product things we roll out. I will say that this is probably one of the capabilities that we are launching that I am most excited about, um, especially because just in the first few weeks after it's launched with a handful of clients, it has been uh, kind of getting adopted at a rate we've not seen before. So that's always nice to see. Um, what you can think of uh, collections as um, a CRM for your biggest ideas, or we've heard other people call it a CRM for innovation. So that's kind of the, the, uh, the big sort of idea behind it, and we'll walk through exactly what that means. Uh, my name is Anand again. Um, I'm one of the co-founders and CEO of CB Insights. I think the key sort of piece of information on this page is my email. So I definitely want to hear from you if you have questions, if you have feedback, if um, if we're not able to address any of the questions at the end of this uh, briefing or this webinar, uh, you know, feel free to drop me a line. So I think that's the most important thing on this slide. So let me jump to uh, what is collections and, and actually why we built it to start. So um, over the last year, I have, uh, over the last six months, I should say, I've talked to over 80 of our customers. So um, it's something that when we were in our early days, I used to do very regularly. And as we've gotten bigger and grown uh, fairly significantly, I've st I kind of just lost touch with a little bit and I didn't like that and so I got back to my roots a little bit and started talking to customers and we received some very consistent feedback um, and the one most consistent piece of feedback we received was as follows which was we love your research we wish you could integrate it into the CB Insights platform so really good piece of feedback we weren't sure how to solve it but since we heard it so much we knew that it was something we had to solve um, and so that's what collections does and I'll explain to you what that looks like in a second the other thing that these conversations ended up unearthing was a pretty archaic medieval process that our clients used to communicate about these big ideas so um, whether you were a VC or corporate strategy or corporate innovation or the CIO team or a biz dev team, generally um, that collaboration around these big ideas and discussion of them happened in an incredibly ad hoc, unstructured, messy way. And so I'm going to use a story to illustrate what that looks like. Common problem, right? We get Sandy, who's the boss, going to Alex, the analyst, and wants to map the AI startup ecosystem. So she very reasonably asks what AI companies might be interesting partners for us, and Alex, as a good analyst, says he is on it. What basically we learned when talking to customers was the process basically after this was um, messy, to put it nicely. So what Alex would do is he would head to CB Insights, he would look for companies, he'd create a list. And so all of you who are on the phone today are kind of our list power users, right? So you're sort of our most active, um, you know, kind of high value capability users. So that's why you're sort of getting first acts, first uh, crack at collections and so what Alex would do just like many of you have probably have done has he'd look for companies using search and he'd create a list and that's when the fun would begin right so Alex would then email this list to a bunch of colleagues asking for feedback on these AI companies and sometimes that feedback would come in the Excel document so we've seen some crazy Excel documents from our clients that have actually become collaboration tools so people are our data is in let's say columns A through G and then in columns you know I, J, K there's comments going back and forth between people so people are using Excel in ways that it was really never intended to be used 
some of that feedback comes via email. Hey, Alex, could you add this company? Hey, Alex, I think you are missing this sort of theme within AI. And then, of course, people were pointing out companies that should be in this sort of landscape that Alex had created. So you had all of this feedback coming to Alex in all these disparate ways, um, you know, in all these different mediums um, that he had to deal with. And then Alex updates it and sends it around again, and voila, that feedback, beautiful feedback cycle happened again. So we saw this again and again with clients, and then oftentimes the first canvas that a client would work in would be Excel, and then the second thing it would go to would be, okay, I need to synthesize this all, and I usually need to make it look a little bit prettier, I need to make it a little bit more visually appealing, and so... Alex, in this case, aggregates all that feedback, and then he's going to try to use PowerPoint to illustrate the market, right? And so that's his next kind of action. And he sends a PowerPoint, and that entire communication mess that I just chatted about starts again, and now the commentary is coming back in PowerPoint and email and Slack and any disparate number of ways, meetings, etc. And so... What we really just kind of the fundamental kind of thing we realized was that especially as our teams and as, as organizations um, need to share this information with more and more folks, there's a complexity of that web that just increases and, you know, we're, we're math geeks, so this is the formula for that. So, you know, if you want to inform or update 10 people on a particular idea, on a particular market, on a particular company, there are at any moment in time 45 potential conversations occurring um, related to that topic. And so our goal was with collections is how do we solve this? And so that's what I'm going to walk you through and I'm going to kind of show you the product. Um, again, sort of collections, we think of it as a CRM for your biggest ideas. And I'm going to hop from now this PowerPoint into the actual product. So this is actually already launched. It is going to be available to you um, right after you get off this call. So um, you'll have access to it. So I'm just going to jump over. Give me one second. Okay, so here we go. So now what we're looking at is um, in CB Insights, there's a new tab called Collections that you'll have access to, and this is a collection, right? And so in this particular case, I'm going to illustrate the artificial intelligence market. So this was the directive that Alex was given and the example that I um, started with. What you see here is unlike an Excel list, which is really one-dimensional, we now have a much more relational view of the AI market. So we have companies, we have investors, we have news articles, we have documents, we have conferences, we can even add other things like discussion in Q&A if we want to. So, um, you know, is AI going to be most disruptive to trading? And I can go ahead and ask that question and start a discussion with my team on that particular topic. Okay, so now we can go to the companies tab and kind of give you the lay of the land there. So we are on the uh, uh, 197 artificial intelligence companies that we've identified. You see those all listed here. Funding, you see these hashtags. So the hashtags are really important. Every one of our customers has a different way that they slice and dice the world. So this now gives you the ability to add that. So now you see healthcare, mental health, um, and wellness as tags associated. If you determine that wellness isn't a tag associated with this company anymore, you can of course delete it. If you want to add a new one, um, you know, I can go add that. Um, here. So if I want to do a little hashtag in honor of you guys, now I've tabled, labeled this VIP CBI. Um, so it's very easy to do that. And then up top, you see kind of what's the frequency of those tags. So if I want to see the deep learning ones, I simply click and I'll see those. So very easy way to kind of uh, uh, kind of subclassify or use your own taxonomy on a set of companies. The other thing that you can do, of course, is go into a company profile and comment on it. So I kind of talked about discussion earlier. This is where you would do that. So, you know, we have Acuity Trading here, um, and let's say that I want to share it with a colleague, um, and I just write in a comment. And I simply at message, so it's not unlike Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn. You'd simply at message who you want to share this with. So I'm going to share it with Alex and post that comment. So here now what would happen is Alex would get an email and letting him know about Acuity Trading and its profile as well as my comment on it. And what he would then be able to do is he doesn't have to come back to the CB Insights platform to respond. All he has to do is email his response in uh 
email a response rather to the email he received from me with my initial comment and it would automatically be threaded here so the idea here is one if you're on the road you simply just do what you do normally respond to the email and it all gets threaded here and then as a result all of our conversation about acuity trading is all happening in one place so that's the collaboration kind of commenting capability which is really important you're going to have the ability to comment on every type of item within a collection. So we think of companies, investors, news, documents, etc., as different item types within a collection. And so all of them are things that you can comment on. So if you want to comment on news, you're also able to do that. Um, so if I go here and I want to go into this article, I can go ahead and comment similarly to how do I did it on Acuity. The other big thing that I think is the probably the most powerful capability of this is this idea of membership in a collection. And so what you're seeing here is you obviously can invite members of your team to the collection and so that you can invite your whole team, you can invite specific folks as I've done below, which you can see here. But the real sort of difference for us here is the, uh, the idea of guests. So now what you can do is you can invite a guest to this collection. A guest could be somebody from a business unit that you're partnering with. It could be a founder of a company that you're investing in or talking to or have already invested in. It could be a professor at Stanford that you want insight about the AI space from. So there's no restriction on who you invite as a guest. There is no requirement that they be a customer of CB Insight. So they will have access to the collection unfettered um, if you invite them. And you can always revoke access as well. What they will not have access to is the ability to search and do all the other things on CBI that you guys probably do. But they will have access to everything in this collection. And it's a great way to... Um, basically engage with other partners, investments, etc., that you want to involve uh, in your discussions. So when I go here, you can see again documents, you can see conferences, you know, what are the events going on, and then you see, see the discussion in Q&A. Um, a few important things here in addition. One is over the right, this button called clone a collection uh, or clone collection. So the, well, the point of this is, is I have an artificial intelligence market collection I've built for, let's say, one business unit or one company. And I want to share essentially that same collection with somebody else. But I don't want that person to see all the comments that myself and that other partner or partners that I've invited have left. So what you do is you can clone the collection and what that will enable you to do is basically copy over all the items and strip out all of the commentary. So you can, if you get similar requests from business units frequently, essentially do the work once and then continue to update uh, them over time. The other big thing that is ha gonna happen here, and I'm gonna find another collection, but that you'll see is up top in many of these collections you will see recommendations for other companies that we believe are valuable and so let me hop to an example of one that is like that okay so here is a another example of a collection where we're now recommending companies. So this was also a challenge that happened regularly, which was I build a set of companies, a collection, and then in two months there's a bunch of new companies that have come up that I should know about, but it's really a pain for me to try to update it, and so I end up kind of recreating the wheel all the time. What we then do is we programmatically try to recommend companies that we believe are similar to companies that are already in your collection. Um, so that way you can simply upvote or downvote, and then uh, those that you upvote get added to your collection and then we learn over time what your preferences are and hopefully make those recommendations even better. So we're going to be recommending companies to you, we're going to be recommending investors, and we're going to be recommending um, news articles to you that we think are relevant. So the idea again is um, you set up a collection once then we do a lot of the heavy lifting hopefully on keeping you up to date on what's happening in that space. So that's the uh, the big parts of collections. I think the one other thing that you'll see up here is this other button that's called Ask an Analyst. At certain subscription levels, so at the higher subscription levels, you will have access to this. This would be, hey, I need help uh, finding other companies that are similar to this. Um, who are the investors who are active in this space? So essentially, you pinging our team to help you build out and make more robust parts of your collection, usually on comparables or investors or um, conferences, for instance. The goal 
here is that things that, you know, if you've already sort of started to see the collection, how do we help you get there faster in terms of getting it to a, a complete state? Um, what Ask an Analyst is not good for is, hey guys, can you build me a 10-point PowerPoint presentation on trends in construction tech, right? That's not what Ask an Analyst is for, but um, hopefully that gives you a sense for where you can use it and you should, um, for those who have access, use it within the, within the collection. Okay, so I've shown you a collection. Now I'm going to show you is how do you build a collection. There's two ways to build a collection. The first is when you go to the Collections tab, you're going to see two types of collections. You're going to see what we call private collections. So these are visible only to you and your team, and the, or rather the, the people you've given access to a collection to. So it could be people from your team or guests. And if you scroll down a bit, you're going to see something called public collections. So back to my earlier point about the feedback we were receiving from our clients, which was, hey, how do you, can you guys tie the research to the platform a bit more? And so public collections are those that are built by our research team. And so the best kind of example is, is this one. We built this um, brick and mortar retail uh, tech landscape. And so you see that here, and this is on the, on the blog. What we then did was, and you'll see this now happening more and more and pretty regularly, is we built, essentially, we took that market map and we built out a collection around it, right? So we basically took off all of these companies and added them to a collection and then subsequently have added more. Um, but now the idea being that you see all those companies and all those subclassifications in that market map are now uh, embodied or are now um, available as these hashtags. So the first way you're going to be able to do um, build a collection is to take what we call a public collection and one kind of word of caution is don't comment in a public collection because everybody can see it. So what you're going to do is you're going to clone that collection. You're going to clone it and by that action you're going to turn it private. At that point you can delete companies off of it. You can delete hashtags. You can really do anything you want. You can start adding new companies etc to it. So our goal is to kickstart you with some of these that sort of that legwork that you do with the research that our team does. So that's method one. Take a collection of hours that's available in the public collection side and f uh, clone it. Um, you're going to see a lot more collections that are created by our team coming in the next few weeks. And then on uh, pretty regularly, our goal is that every, every research brief we do would come with an accompanying collection. So that's method one. Method two is from search. So if you've built a private list, you can build a collection. I'm going to show you how. Okay, so now we are at company search. How do you build a, a collection? Pretty straightforward. I'm going to go here and just do a very simple search for companies. And I can add even more. You know, I could add performance metrics, financing, etc. Again, just for the sake of illustration, I'm going to keep it quite broad and simple. And now what you're going to see here is we have 66 companies kind of engaged in some way in deep learning. What I'm going to do is click to select all of them, and then I'm going to just click Add to List. You're going to notice one thing because you guys are kind of the early adopter crew. Um, the list collections terminology is a bit interchangeable, and you'll see still see the term list um, in many places on the site. Think of it just like collections. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to uh, build out a new collection called Deep Learning Startups. Um, I'm going to not get email updates. I'm going to confirm that. And then by doing that, all I have to do is now go to uh, collections. And what you'll see there, once collections loads, is deep learning startups, right? And so I can then go into that particular collection. It's relatively bare bones right now, right? Because I've only added companies, but I can go in and add news articles. I can go do all the rest of that and build out all those tabs. And then, of course, because I've just built this, I can start to invite people from my team or I can invite a startup or anybody else I'm working with as guests, co-investor, etc. So that's method two. So you have your ability to take a public collection from us and clone it and make it private, or you can do it from search. The other simple way, once you've built a collection, is to go to... Um, uh, to its profile and so as I'm doing right now with Airbnb when I'm on the profile of Airbnb what you're going to be able to do is you're going to see the following or uh, button if you click that little arrow underneath it that's going to open up all of the collections that are you have and I have a lot obviously um, and you can go ahead and add it to whichever one you want to add it to right so if I want to put them in Airbnb into the InsureTech 
bucket. Now you now see that InsureTech, it has 26 companies on it, and it's one of three private lists that I have. So that's method two of getting to, uh, or adding rather, items to a collection uh, through the button. So um, we've kind of walked through the, the structure of a collection and then how to add to it. Um, I think the key things at this point are really kind of what's next and next steps. Um, so from our side, we're going to continue to build out lots of public collections. You're going to start seeing them in the newsletter more. You're going to start seeing them on the actual research briefs. But in the meantime, you can obviously take any of the collections we've built and clone them and make them your own, or you can start building a collection from search or from company profiles, as I illustrated. Um, so let me kind of just get to really big next steps, and then we'll jump to sort of Q&A. Okay, so next steps. We're going to turn on collections. As I mentioned, it should be live, if not already, within the next half hour. We're going to convert all your private list to collections, so you may see quite a few collections up front. Right now, for latency reasons, the collections are, only, are limited to 1,500 companies, so just one thing to keep in mind. We're, gonna, we're working on that, but and we found that that's generally pretty good for folks. Um, and then, at that point, you can build your clone public collections. You can start commenting, adding in items, inviting others, etc. So that's kind of next steps. In terms of help, please email me um, or your customer success uh, uh, liaison at CB Insights, but definitely don't hesitate to reach out to me. This product is a bit, this particular capability, I think of it a little bit as my baby, so we're trying to really make sure that you know we answer all your questions and that you're successful with it. But in terms of where you know we want to help, you want to help building out a collection for an industry you're analyzing, definitely let us know. If you want help building out a collection for a portfolio company or prospective investment, let us know. And then if you want us to do a review of collections for your team, uh, definitely don't hesitate to reach out on that front either. So um, with that, um, I'm going to turn it over to see if there's any questions. And we'll take a few questions, um, and then uh, we'll uh, uh, go on our merry way. Again, if you have more questions or if we're not able to get to all of them, um, I will email everybody with the answers to any questions we don't cover right now. All right, so I'm going to look for some questions and then we'll get going. Okay, so the first question that I've see, I see coming through is what are the limits on who you can invite to a collection? So I just want to go back to emphasizing um, that particular point. And let me go back to here. Um, so what you see now is, uh, let's go into artificial intelligence. There is no limit is really, I guess, the short answer, right? You can invite as many people you want from as many different organizations or within your organization as you'd like. Um, and you can just do that from the members tab. So there is no limit. The only restriction we have on the guests that you invite is that they need to have a business email address. So you cannot invite Gmail, Yahoo, etc etc um, there's no limit the only thing is they will only see the collection you've invited them to they will not be able to use ask an analyst they will not be able to clone the collection they will um, not be able to let's say delete items from the collection but they'll be able to do everything else comment view etc add to um, and they will also not be able to do any of the searches up top so they're going to be very restricted to that particular collection uh, that you've given them access to you can always revoke access as well so just to keep that in mind um, but hopefully that answers your question okay next question um, beyond market mapping uh, are there any other use cases that you've already come across so um, I think when we built the tool, we really thought market mapping would be one of the primary use cases. I will say the other use case that's happened pretty quickly, which we really like, is um, people are building collections around a particular startup and its competitors. And they're using that with their co-investors, they're using that with fellow board members, and then most often they're sharing it with the portfolio company themselves. So let me show you an example of one. So. You know, you can build a collection around Uber and its comparables. And so now what you see here is um, Uber with all of the different companies that it sort of takes on, right? And so now you see um, 
scoot networks it looks like shareable smart phone enabled scooter sharing right okay you know you might think of them as ultimately it's getting person from point a to point b yeah let's think of that as a as a uber comparable and you could just go ahead and add it um but this is the other thing and so what we'd see here is if i'm board member bill Gurley at benchmark and i'm on uber's board um, i can now go ahead and invite co-investors i can go ahead and invite the founders if a new chief revenue officer or head of sales comes on board they no longer have to go um, elsewhere and sort through uh, a myriad of emails they get forwarded to figure out what's going on it's all in one place um, the other kind of interesting sort of use case within a use case we've seen is when they build out a collection for a portfolio company um, we've seen people start adding people to the people tab often for the purposes of um, who are candidates that they might want to recruit, right? So in the case of Uber, you know, we added the senior software engineer at a at a startup that might be relevant to them and the chair in the vehicle automation group at Clemson University, which might be, which it looks like somebody at Uber might want to be talking to. So one, obviously this is a fictitious example. It, people are real, but this is obviously not what Uber is using or one of their investors are using. Um, but hopefully this illustrates one of the other kind of common use cases, which is of, uh, of sharing it with, uh, with either uh, portfolio companies or the other one that's sort of related is prospective investments or prospective startups you're thinking of working with. And what we'll often see there is they'll list that company in the collection and then also all of their competitors. And then they'll start to ask their Q&A um, here of, you know, why are you better than X? You know, how do you think about market? And again, now all of that information is stored here and made available um, to anybody who gets invited to that collection at some point later. So if you have to bring on somebody else, the exec team, let's say you do the investment, you can go ahead and invite them and it's all in one place. Um, let me see if there's any other questions. Okay, there's a question about pricing. So in terms of pricing, um, if you're on the right subscription level, which I believe is insights or above at present, collections is free to you. Um, you can invite as many people as you want. You can build as many collections as you'd like. Um, there is no cost for uh, collections. You know, we obviously, um, we're very interested in understanding your workflow and, and being part of that in a more, uh, in, in a more substantial way and so we view collections as a way to do that so um, so that's kind of the the view on on pricing at present all right um, I don't see any more questions coming through right now and I think we're uh, just at about at our time uh, being over um, so um, if there are any maybe that I've missed in the queue, I will make sure that we get you answers to those. Again, feel free to reach out to me if you have questions, if you need help building collections. We want to get this kick started for you. Um, we think um, based on at least the early response from some of our largest clients who've really adopted it, we think you're going to like it a lot and we look forward to seeing what you're going to do with it. Thanks again for making the time and I look forward to hearing from you. Talk to you soon. Bye.